Hi, I'm Christine. Today I wanted to share with you some products or ideas that have come my way in the last three or four months. Some for skin, some for hair, some for that beauty that we keep hidden so far inside ourselves that nobody gets to see it. These are products that may be new or they may be new to me, but they all exceeded my expectations. The least a product can do is what it said it was going to do. These actually went a little bit further. So good surprises worth talking about. I own these products. I am not paid to promote them. One of them is available in the shop on my website, and I'll tell you about that when we get to it. And the links, of course, will all be in the description. Our first product is JVN Air Dry. I was looking for soft volume in a hair product. It's this cream that you put in your hair after you've towel dried it. And I like this so much because you get healthy hair, soft volume, just like it says it's going to do, a little more shine, a little more body. It's an excellent product. No buildup, cooperates with other hair products. I started off using it just after I towel dried my hair when I was air drying it, which is about half the time, but it's so pleasant. It's a light scent. It doesn't linger. It gives you this very healthy looking head of hair that I now wear it I, every time I shampoo. So whether I'm going to bed with wet hair or if I'm styling my hair for the day, I'll use this. You can follow with any other products or styling that you like. It's, uh, it's excellent. I have a lot of very, very fine hair. So I'm looking for something that doesn't weigh my hair down. This is perfect. But people of different hair texture may have a different result. Great thing, I bought it at Sephora. So you can see what other people have said about it. And you can also try it a few times before you decide if you want to buy it. Our second product is a foundation by The Body Shop and it's called Fresh Nude. I think this is a reformulation of a previous product by the same name. Client said to me recently about foundation, there is either too much choice or not enough, both at the same time. And I completely agree and I think that applies for all cosmetics. But foundation, it is easier to buy a bathing suit than to buy foundation because the color can be very particular. You've got to try it on. And so I was at the Toronto airport about a month ago and I had lots of daylight because it's all windows and I had some time on my hands and I wander into the body shop and what do my eyes see but this huge range of colors that all look very good. Many people of the same skin darkness or depth in the same season, the same group of natural coloring, can actually wear the same foundation color. So it might be a place for you to at least start. I am a dark winter. That means I'm a winter colored person with a little bit of autumn. And the color that I wear is light 3C, probably C for cool. There are 40 shades of this product. So a very large range. It has a very convenient little spatula tip that I'm going to try to show you without getting it all over me. Maybe against the black t-shirt, you can see the little tip. So recyclable materials, and it makes it a very convenient testing system in the store, but it's also a very convenient dispenser for keeping the product in the bottle clean. Our third product is Wet and Wild Lash Renegade Mascara a budget-friendly, cruelty-free mascara. The applicator is a wand with a spiky ball on the end. You maybe have used that type of applicator in other brands as well. I mostly use the ball because I find that I can apply it vertically to get length and definition and separation in the eyelashes. It works really well. And uh, it's also great for the outer corners. Not really one to use winged eyeliner. I think that if it's fine for young faces, it's fine for fairy tale type faces, but I don't have either one. Uh, my idea of great eyeliner, like all makeup, just take what you are and add more of it. With eyeliner, if you drew a line from the inner corner of your eye to the outer corner of your eye, basically follow or extend that line a little bit. So winged eyeliner, great for some faces, not so much for me, but what I think can be very flattering for people is more uh, definition and length of the lashes at the outer corners of the eyes. So you get big uh, separation, sort of extends the eye shape a little bit further out. This product gives you great lift, so you have a wide awake look. If anything, it's a little bit sticky. So not only do you get separation, but the lashes lift upwards. I'm not, and stay that way, I'm not someone to use an eyelash curler. Um, it's not thick, it's not clumpy. You get length and you get volume at the same time. 
and you can keep applying if you want an extraordinary look but you can also if you're like me and you just want to stop at ordinary it works very well for that because not all mascaras do our next product we're back to hair is paul mitchell's hair serum as expected you get smoothness and you get shine also lightness of weight also lightness of scent animal friendly eco-friendly packaging it is not greasy the next day I think this is an excellent product. I figure anyone with silver hair would want to be thinking about a shine product. If I had silver hair, I would use the heck out of this. But anybody who wants some shine, I think this is an excellent product. Next product is a highlighter, and this is the one that is available on my website. The right placement of shine is flattering, I think, for all faces. It is enhancing to the skin texture. It is enhancing to the matte textures that we wear in our other cosmetics and also in our clothing because it provides a contrast. And I've had many requests for a cool, kind of icy, snowy, platinum-colored highlighter. And so it was a very pleasant surprise to find something beautiful in that color range for true and bright winter that has a beautiful formulation and application and also nine other gorgeous colors. When I add a product to the web shop, I am looking for one or two great colors for 12 types of natural coloring, not 12 colors for two groups of natural coloring. I was speaking with our analyst in Oregon recently, Ann Beerworth, and I'll put the links to the color analyst directory in the description. And we were talking about how the fashion industry has long understood that women need to be encouraged to stay with the silhouettes that flatter our body types. But the cosmetic industry just seems so much more random, almost uh, behind the times, or they're living out at the extremes. And most of us are in the middle in terms of our colors and also the presentation that we want to create. So they're still floating between anyone can wear anything or the best lipstick for your skin tone, but they don't get any more specific than that. And so we end up losing ourselves to unflattering looks in the name of supporting the fashion industry. I think there are other options. You know, I think that's maybe my mission in life is for you to know you have other choices. Any season, any group of natural coloring can wear shine in the same way that we can all wear jewelry. We reflect light and adding the right kind of illumination is beautiful. The question is, what is the color of the shine? And what is the nature, the type of the reflectivity? Because it's not the same for everybody. And so rose gold in super shimmery products is probably not a natural or believable look for many faces or what many women want to add to their face. These colors come from the color palettes for the seasons. This is Exotica for light summer and they're very beautiful colors. This product looks more glowy than sparkly. It's just the color that your skin would shine and it leaves you in control of how much shine and where it's placed. Certain body types in any season, the ethereal transcendent crowd as an example, can benefit enormously from specific, I would even say strategic, <laughs> placement of light to define the angles of the face and to add that little touch of, of lift and lightness including the autumns where we hear a lot about matte formulations and it is very true that matte formulations and contour would be the standard. Those are the things that you would use uh, every single day. But autumns are also those people standing in the late afternoon sun or the glowing dark light of a fireplace. And so the right kind of shine can look absolutely beautiful. I cannot overstate how sheer the color of this product is. When you purchase it, what you receive is a pressed powder in a screw top pot like this. And if I put some on my hand, I'm going to put it right up here. So you see it going on. It doesn't look orange. <laughs> and as I've got, I've put a lot of it on here, but you see how it creates just a little bit of shimmer of light. It would blend perfectly with the skin tones. It would blend perfectly with the blush. It would be beautiful underneath the eyes, but it's not particularly overt in its own right. Dark autumn is a warmer season than me. So you see the distance between the blush that I'm wearing and 
uh, the product on my wrist, but on a dark autumn, it just adds a glow to the skin. It's beautiful. For small faces where light can scatter too widely and it gets out of control, so you put some here and the whole upper half of your face is kind of shining and strobing a little bit, this is very controllable. So application with a tiny eyeshadow brush, I actually use a cotton swab. Um, if you have a larger facial geometry, wider bone structure, then you could use a fingertip, which would be very nice to help it blend into the skin. The angles of the face light up beautifully. So I'm a dark winter. I wear petite. I have it along the top of my cheekbones. I also put it on the end of my nose <laughs> and I put it in the bow of the upper lip in the same way that I have contour all the way down my neck because I am trying to create a three-dimensional head. Pull a face forward off the neck and a three-dimensional face. Pull the middle of the face forward so you don't have too flat of an effect. That's a kind of filming thing that works for me. But just saying it is not an exaggerated, greasy, or strange disco look, even in the daytime. We put Cleopatra on a transcendent soft autumn last week. You can see Cleopatra on the screen here now. And it was perfect. Small areas on the top of the cheekbone, out at the outer corners here, the bow of the upper lip, and everything just looked better. She was wearing a shimmery eyeshadow from the eyeshadow palette uh, on the website for soft autumn. And the overall effect was subtle, it was sophisticated, and she felt perfectly comfortable wearing it, even in the middle of the day. Our last idea, it's not really a product, it kind of is, is about that beauty that we keep hidden within. An inspiration to imagine ourselves in a different way that is even more authentic of us than how we present ourselves to the world now, but we don't quite know how to access that person, what it even looks like, so we're not sure how to get started. There's a movie in theaters now called Elvis, about Elvis Presley, of course, that I really recommend that you go see. The movie has the same compulsive rhythm as his music did. You know, I've got the God and you've got the greed. And so it is kind of heartbreaking, but these performances are huge perfectly calibrated against one another and it is just so inspiring because a lot of times that's where inspiration comes from something outside of ourselves you ever look in a mirror and know that if you peeled away the things that you're adding to your appearance there's someone different under there that you have this suspicion that you might never admit to yourself or anyone else that you're actually really really beautiful but you've never seen it and you have no idea how to bring this to the surface or how you would live inside this new skin. For now, the choices you make are okay. You gotta get out the door every, every day and there's nothing better uh, available to you, but there's this gap between how you're living in the world and how you should be or could be living in the world. And because there's a gap, there's a line of tension. Because there's tension, there's a force that's pulling them back closer together. You're willing to make a move you don't even need a guarantee of success. You need a direction. You can't take a first step into nowhere. We live in a physical body in a physical world. You, you got to aim it somewhere. Well, color was my first step. And for the people who visit me, they don't arrive knowing who they're about to become. They don't know who is going to be looking at them in the mirror when they leave, but they are willing to try. I so encourage you to see the Elvis movie. It was a really transformative film experience for me. That ability to imagine ourselves as something other than who we are right now, to imagine the possibilities that seem so available to us and yet so out of reach, that's very powerful. And that kind of power doesn't tend to come from bottles and jars. It takes a little bit longer to develop. It comes from deeper places within us or forces that are bigger than us that put us on the right track. For Elvis, it was music. But he imagined himself as something other than what he was, and he could always hang on to that. He trusted that he was moving that way. And so he was filled with self-doubt, the same as we all are. He didn't know where he was going to end up, same as we all are. But he was willing to walk on the path. I hope you got some good ideas from this video, and I look forward to hearing your thoughts and your comments. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.